Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, we are going to understand how we can calculate the value of osmotic pressure by different methods. In my previous videos, I have already explained what osmosis and osmotic pressures actually are. So in this video, we will understand how to calculate the value of osmotic pressure. There are two major methods to calculate the value of osmotic pressure. So in this video, we will understand both of them one by one. So hold, let's start. First of all, we need to have the concept of osmosis and osmotic pressure. Osmosis is the phenomenon in which the solvent molecules flows through the semi-permeable membrane from lower concentration solution to higher concentrated solution. And osmotic pressure is the minimum amount of pressure that is required to stop the osmosis or the flow of solvent molecules through the semi-permeable membrane. Now, let's understand the first method that is used to calculate the value of osmotic pressure. So you can see over here, the first method is Pfeffer's method. This is pronunciated as Pfeffer. Okay. So uh, Pfeffer method is widely used to calculate the value of osmotic pressure. In this, we use simple way to calculate like, uh, like vapor pressure. We use a manometer to calculate the value of osmotic pressure in Pfeffer's method. So first of all, let me draw the simple diagram and we will understand everything along with the diagram. Okay. So he, he considered a pot like this, but it was a special type of pot because this wall is made up of semi-permeable membrane. Okay, this is a semi-permeable membrane pot. Let me write it over here. Semi-permeable membrane pot semi-permeable membrane pot and this is connected to a tube like this and this whole pot is put in a big beaker big container okay and from here there is a outlet like this and this tube is sealed from here okay and this outlet is further connected to a manometer like this this is a manometer like this so I hope you consider the figure properly this is the semi permeable membrane pot this wall is made up of semi permeable membrane okay and it is kept in a big container and this is connected to the manometer through a tube and the other end of the tube is sealed it is sealed so this is the manometer over here manometer and inside this pot there is solution highly concentrated solution whose osmotic pressure is to be calculated and here this is the water or the solvent outside this pot there is this solvent okay this is the solvent and this is the solution solution and we know that in manometer there is mercury right this is the manometer okay let me read this first one first of all we need to make these two level equal and we need to put a scale over here that gives us the information about the height and as a result of that we can calculate the value of the pressure so this is the complete diagram of Pfeffer's method figure Pfeffer's Pfeffer's diagram okay and this is called Pfeffer's apparatus now uh, let's understand what actually happens over here okay so this is the solution and due to the osmosis what will happen the water molecules will start to flow from the low concentrated region low concentrated solution that is this distilled water or solvent to this solution the water molecules will start to enter now as a result of that 
the word uh, the solution level will start to rise and as this end is sealed then obviously they will try to go this end now there is air as well that air will start to get compressed and as a result of that this air will push this level and the level of mercury in the left side of this manometer will start to decrease and in the right side it starts to increase and this phenomenon will keep on happening this will keep on increasing that means obviously there is pressure being generated right now there will be a time when this phenomenon stops when this phenomenon stops over here like suppose this is point a so at point a this phenomenon stops now the mercury level in the right side of the manometer will not go up so what will happen we can measure the height difference like this right so this gives us the information about the height and if we know the height we can calculate the value of or pressure as well so that pressure is equal to the osmotic pressure so try to remember that by using the manometer a pressure is generated over here which pushes this liquid upside and as a result of that there will be a height difference and that gives us the value of pressure generated over here and that is equal to the osmotic pressure when this height is maximum okay so let me write it over here what uh, we are doing Pfeffer Pfeffer took a took a semi permeable semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane pot and put the solution and put the solution in it here we put the solution in it the pot that is the semi permeable pot is kept in large container large container filled with filled with solvent solvent or water in most case the open end of the pot pot is joined to to the manometer manometer due to osmosis due to osmosis the level of liquid in manometer in manometer will rise will rise and and at a certain time at a certain time reaches to reaches to maximum maximum that height that height gives us gives us the osmotic pressure that height gives us the osmotic pressure Yes, sir. I have already uh, made a video in which we used manometer to calculate the value of vapor pressure. So osmotic pressure can also be calculated by using a manometer and this is how it is calculated. We just need this height and with the help of height we can calculate the required value of the pressure. So when it reaches the maximum height that is H then that is equal to the osmotic pressure. Whatever pressure is generated over here, we can calculate that mathematically. So that will be equal to the osmotic pressure because it stops the osmosis. And when it reaches the maximum height, the water molecule stops going inside. That means the cease of osmosis and that is equal to the osmotic pressure. I hope you understood everything about the Pfeffer's method. Now let's understand the second method. Berkeley and Hartley method is more efficient than the Pfeffer's method. You can also say this method as the successor of that method. So let's understand about Berkeley and Hartley method with the diagram. Okay. So they considered a large chamber like this. Berkeley and Hartley considered a large chamber like this. And inside that chamber, there is a tube fitted just like this there is a tube fitted just like this now let me use black marker 
end in the left part this tube is further fitted with a capillary tube and in the right side it is the water reservoir or the solvent reservoir okay this is the solvent reservoir and here this tube expands like this and there is a piston that is pushing it downward this is the piston now uh, inside of this tube there is a uh, solvent this is the solvent part and this is the solution part solution there is also solution this whole part is the solution and this inside is solvent and this is the capillary tube let me make this solvent and this blue marker blue sorry black lines represent solvent molecules and these blue lines represent the solution it will be easier for us to understand if i use two colored markers so look at here this is the water reservoir over here this is the solvent reservoir solvent reservoir now this is capillary tube capillary tube and this is the berkeley and hartley method to calculate the osmotic pressure now look at here let's understand what i uh, what they actually did they made a tube like this they made a uh, they made a machinery like this okay all the apparatus used are over here now what happens uh, this is made up of semi permeable wall semi permeable wall now it makes more sense now look at here there is the solvent molecule this whole tube is filled with solvent molecule that is water you can say and other uh, outside of this solvent molecule there is solution only then what will happen the, uh, from this semi permeable membrane this this these are semi permeable membrane from this semi permeable membrane the water molecules will start to go outside in this direction right due to the osmosis water molecule will flow from low concentrated solution to higher concentrated solution or from dilute solution to the concentrated solution now if this solution starts the, this solvent molecule start to go out this will mix with solution and as a result of that the volume of solution will increase right and it will keep on rising and finally it will start to push this piston up because more the more and more solvent molecule is being mixed with solution and the level of solution is rising and it will start to push up this is the piston this is the uh, solution this will start to push it up slowly okay now we need to apply some pressure from here we are applying pressure from here we put a pressure measuring device over here so that it will be easier for us to calculate the pressure now we apply little bit amount of pressure but will the phenomenon stop no because more and more solvent molecule will pass through it due to the osmosis phenomenon and more and more pressure will be applied to the piston and as a result of that we need to apply more pressure on the piston from the external part so that the piston do not move and we need to keep increasing the pressure increasing the pressure increasing the pressure but at a certain point the uh, piston will not try to go up the osmosis phenomenon will stop this pressure will stop this phenomenon and we can measure that pressure we can know that pressure from this pressure measuring device and that pressure is the osmotic pressure so the external pressure that is applied on the piston that stops the uh, osmosis phenomenon is called the osmotic pressure right this is how we can calculate it so let me write what we did over here berkeley Berkeley and Hartley, Hartley made in made a machine, machine let's call it machine or chamber, chamber as shown in figure. 
axonin figure right the solvent molecules the solvent molecules will will mix with will mix with solution the solvent molecules will mix with solution due to osmosis due to osmosis and and start to push start to push the piston start to push the piston upwards to stop to stop the piston piston from moving up moving up external external pressure is applied applied to stop the piston from moving up we need to apply the external pressure the piston the piston will try to will try to move up move up so we need to we need to keep increasing increasing the pressure we need to keep increasing the pressure there will be a point there will be a point there will be a point the piston piston will not will not try to move the pressure the pressure that is the external pressure the external pressure at that point at that point is equal to is equal to the osmotic pressure so i hope you understood everything about berkeley and hartley method the solvent molecule will pass through this semi permeable membrane and mix with the solution as a result of that the solution's level will rise and it will start to push the piston upward and there will be a point uh, sorry it will push upward we need to apply external pressure to stop the piston from moving up and there uh, the piston will keep on moving up and up and up and there will be a point uh, the external pressure will actually balance the osmotic pressure sorry the pressure applied by this solution and that is called the osmotic pressure the pressure that that is required to stop the osmosis phenomenon is called osmotic pressure so these are the two important method to calculate the value of osmotic pressure now nowadays we do not use any of the method we use modern method we have a machinery to calculate the value of osmotic pressure very easily so nowadays we use this modern osmometer and this is called berkeley and hartley osmometer and the previous one was called pfeffer's osmometer so that's all in this video i hope you understood everything about this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video